gospel of luke chapter 7 the last uh, incident that uh, last portion of the scripture we will try to learn together gospel of luke uh, chapter 7 verses 36 uh, through 50 gospel of luke chapter 7 verse 36 through 50 let us read together this is from the niv we'll read together <clears throat> this is on the screen you can follow that also now one of the pharisees invited jesus to have dinner with him so he went to the pharisee's house and reclined at the table when a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that jesus was eating at the pharisee's house she brought an alabaster jar of perfume and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping she began to wet his feet with her tears then she wiped them with her hair kissed them and poured perfume on them when the pharisee who had invited him saw this he said to himself if this man were a prophet he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is that she is a sinner jesus answered him simon i have something to tell you tell me teacher he said two men owed money to a certain money lender one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50 neither of them had the money to pay him back so he cancelled the debts of both now which of them will love him more Simon replied I suppose the one who had the bigger debt cancelled you have judged correctly Jesus said then he turned toward the women and said to Simon do you see this woman i came into your house you did not give me any water for my feet but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair you did not give me a kiss but this woman from the time i entered he has she has not stopped kissing my feet you did not put oil on my head but she has poured perfume on my feet therefore i tell you her many sins have been forgiven for she loved much but he who has been forgiven little loves little then jesus said to her your sins are forgiven the other guests began to say among themselves who is this who even forgives sins jesus said to the woman your faith has saved you go in peace it is a rich text there is so much to learn i believe that from this sport and this uh, catch you know your attention as you read also you know whenever i see hair in the bible that catch my attention so that is one of my curiosity when i look into this portion so i was doing some research about hair i will say about that some other time actually you know praise the lord yeah <laughs> let's let's come back here in the text over here we see three people over there one is jesus the other one is the pharisee the simon and the third one is the woman the unknown woman you know over there you know what what happened over here you know this is very simple uh, but i think that this is so profound as we serve god together there are many things we can learn out of it simon was a religious leader he was a pharisee and uh, he invited jesus we don't know why he invited jesus into his house he sit out of curiosity or the traveling you know rabbi the guru those who come in the city you know that was a party you know the people invite them for lunch or for a meal at their house because they are prominent people you know that may be the reason we don't know why it was over there but we know the culturally you know of course that we can understand that very well the people those who come from the east you know they have the porch and uh, they have a you know place of the court they called and uh, that is where the the meal or the dinner is going on and the people the neighbors or the other people can come and they are not invited guests but they are not intruders either they are able to come you know they are not invited you know they can come you know we know those who from india we know that actually the neighbors are more concerned about what is happening in our house than in their house that's why we are also right the same way so that can be the culturally we can understand that but what happened let us look at this woman first actually who is this woman we don't know anything about her we don't know much about her in that sense but the bible says or the gospel writers are recording about this woman she is a sinner that is her identity we all are sinners by the way that is true but for her their sin is her profession the sin is her identity that people know her only through her sin so the commentators assume and they say that she may be a prostitute in the city that everybody know her so she is a sinner you can just imagine your in your mind now a pharisee a prostitute a prophet getting together for lunch what a contrast there right so we see all these people together on the same table over here so she is a sinner not only she is a sinner she is a well known sinner and simon knew her very well about this lady and the people knew her everybody knew her 
but there is something good about that also not only she is just a sinner not only just she is a non sinner or a familiar sinner in the city rather she is a forgiven sinner that is why she is over here she is a repentant sinner you know when the commentator says that chronologically you take the events where this happened they believe that in uh, matthew chapter 11 Jesus gave an invitation come and to be those who are weary and heavy laden i will give you rest and this lady might have responded to the invitation of jesus then she trusted jesus she asked for her forgiveness and that is maybe the reason that she is over here as the story continues that is what we see is the gift that she brought the way that she expressed herself and the things that she does under the feet of jesus all these things tells us that she is a forgiven repentant sinner not only just a sinner she is a forgiven uh, uh, and repentant sinner look at her actions over here if you read you know carefully line by line there are many things that she has done we can study that in detail but just uh, go through that fast over here and because of she was forgiven look at that her actions that comes and verse 37 it says that when a woman who had lived a sinful life as we have said in that town learn that jesus was eating at the pharisee's house now she was an eagerness to know about jesus and this is a mark of a forgiven sinner you know when we know that jesus forgave our sins we don't have an indifference towards jesus anymore we are interested in jesus that is what she this lady had actually her reaction is that she want to know about jesus where is jesus now and what she want to do she want to follow where jesus is she want to know where jesus is she want to follow where jesus is and her readiness to know where jesus is prompted her the action and what is she doing she didn't come with an empty handed before jesus rather she came with an expensive perfume in an alabaster jar in a flask she brought this before jesus and what is she doing over here so she didn't come with an empty handed she want to bring something before jesus and she don't want to go you know to jesus like as it is but she want to bring something before jesus so she come with this uh, expensive perfume in her hand and look at this woman again we can see that in the culturally we understand from that culture and that time that women has no right what so ever at all as the sharia was saying actually jesus gave the prominence and value added to the women so the women were not publicly allowed to go places and they are not able to expose to things either and especially going to a pharisee house is not an easy thing at all so not only she learned about jesus not only she brought something to jesus she took the courage it to come and meet jesus in a pharisee's house that take lot of courage and we you know we may not be able to get it that 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 the depth of it but it take lot of courage to go into a pharisee's house as a as a woman especially with her cultural norms and with her reputation going to this man's house take lot of courage also remember that there's a contrast to see you see again she is a well known sinner in the city he is the professor of self righteousness in the city so both of them are come together and she is willing to go there it is a lot of risk that she take over there but we see then the, the story continues there and as she stood behind him at his feet weeping and where is she sta- standing she is not searching or looking for the prominent place in the banquet rather she is sitting at the feet standing behind the feet of jesus jesus is sitting and his his feet is you know they are like lying down like that that is a position most of the places that we see and that is where we see that john was you know leaning towards jesus you know jesus chest and those kinds of phrases that we read and jesus was sitting there and she is standing behind the feet that shows her humility not only she was bold enough to come there she was humble enough to stand at the feet of jesus she was standing at the feet of jesus what is she doing there she is weeping we don't know why she is weeping there may be different reasons we can assume maybe she is weeping by seeing the feet of jesus later jesus says that i came to your house you didn't offer water to feed my wash my feet so by seeing jesus feet maybe but more or more over that she may be weeping over the sins that she has committed in her life she may be overwhelmed by the forgiveness that jesus has offered to her and she was able to standing at the feet of jesus that thought itself you know catch her 
and that the holy spirit is working through her heart maybe we don't know why it is but she was standing at the feet of jesus and she was weeping and crying she may be thinking about herself her past or she may be thinking about christ himself we don't know why it is but she was overwhelmed by emotions standing at the feet of jesus and she was she was weeping and then what she does the other thing that she does we see over there her affection and her love and what is she doing she poured this oil into his feet and covered with that perfume and she is kissing the feet of jesus traditionally or culturally the this is the responsibility of the host you know to give them kiss them and embrace them invite them in the house offer them water to feed with their feet and give them oil to, to to anoint them these are the responsibilities of the host but they did he didn't do any of those things rather this lady is doing all these things to jesus you know they look at that her personal love towards jesus you know her hand her tears her hair she offered this alabaster jar of perfume to jesus she does all these things and why look at this lady again you know she could have sent this to someone else give it to jesus right she could have done that or she could have given to one of the disciples and say why don't you give this to the master she could have done that but she didn't do any of those things she is doing that by herself it has been said that love has no sponsors it is the expression of her love towards jesus is the best and simple definition of worship is that you know what it is it is our expression towards god that is what what god has done for us that is what we do let us go the story continues over here and her service was so passionate it was so intense and it was like so practical and it was so real and the one thing we notice in this story is that actually but she didn't even say a word at all before or after you know she, he didn't say she didn't say any word at all nothing has been said from her mouth at all look at what other thing she does she came to jesus standing at the feet of jesus she weeping overwhelmed with, with her sorrow of her, her past maybe she wipes his jesus feet with her hair the sign of deep humility she kisses his feet the gesture of his affection and respect she anoints his feet in gratitude for what he has done for her so she is expressing herself over here and again before we go further we, we, even if we don't have the time we have to say a couple of things over there but remember that none of those things are she is not doing in order to be forgive or to be forgiven she is doing all these things because she was forgiven and that is a pattern that we see over here at the end jesus says that go in peace your faith has saved you so all the things that she is doing over here is not to be forgiven rather she is doing all these things because she was forgiven that point we have to be keep in mind because bible nowhere else tells us that we have to do good works to be saved at all the bible teaches that we are saved by grace and grace alone we are saved by grace through faith and we put our trust in the finished work of jesus that is the way we are saved that thing we should never forget first john chapter 4 verse 19 the bible says that we love why because he has loved us first because he has loved us first and we love jesus we love and we do things in service to the kingdom of god not for anything else the reason that we do is it is because we he loved us first that is so everything that we do is a response to god's love towards us in galatians chapter 5 verse 6 it's a beautiful phrase that paul says over there he says that the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love it is only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love so let me go further here so remember that in mind it is not that she is trying to earn something she is doing as a response because what god has done for her let's go further the story continues here the reaction of simon by seeing this thing simon spoke to himself or he was thinking in his mind what he says he says there simon look at his uh, his mind and his uh, look, look at jesus and the action he was so embarrassed first of all that's a lady is in his house right 
He is embarrassed not only that this lady is here, what she is doing. He is not only embarrassed, she is there and what he is doing. She is doing what to? Jesus. And that is what embarrassed him. So he was thinking and this is what he says. He, he thought in his mind, the Pharisee who had invited saw him this. And he said to himself, this man were a prophet. And he would know who is touching him and what kind of a woman she is that she is a so he wants to trust that point and he's thinking that, who is this? He is questioning the identity of Jesus. And he is questioning the ability of Jesus. He is questioning both of those things, right? If, what kind of a person is this? If he claimed that he is a prophet, he could have easily find out what kind of a woman is this. Looking, look at this, the irony is this, Jesus answered him. The moment he was thinking that, Jesus answered, Simon, I have something to tell you, Simon, I have something to tell you. It is interesting that, right? So Simon is questioning the ability of Jesus, thinking in his mind, Jesus is calling him out. And that is a scary thought in one way. You know, I always take refuge in that actually, nobody can read my mind. Even though we study psychology, you know, you cannot read anybody's mind at all. Just imagine that other people can read your mind. Man, there will be no relationship in the world at all then, right? How much pretense we do every single day to before people are like, Oh, brother, I love you. Then, <laughs> right? So we, we do not show that. It is all there. But God, read our minds. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 4 verse 13, it says that everything is open and naked before his eyes. Remember that. We can hide from one another. Our thoughts or emotions or ideas, all things. But there is something that nobody can hide. Remember that God sees even every thought that goes through our mind. It says that thousands of thoughts go through our mind every single day. Some of the th thoughts we try to dwell in that. But some of the things just passing by like that. And it's just keep on going. God sees all those things. Everything is naked and open before his eyes. Simon, you have a doubt about who I am, right? Let me read your mind and tell you that this is what you are thinking right now. I am sure that Simon was shocked by, he is calling him Simon, this is what you are thinking. Then he is giving him a beautiful parable over there. There is a parable, then Jesus says that two men owe the two different kinds of money, ten times more than the other one. And one has uh, fifty dollars, the other one has five hundred dollars, or one was five hundred or the five thousand dollars. But both of them didn't have the money to pay it back. But the creditor, what he did, the NKJV or the KJV says that he freely forgiven their debt. <laughs> freely forgiven. You don't have to do any of those things at all. Oh, we have to pray for our credit card companies for this thing, right? So they will freely forgive our things. The creditor freely forgive these things. Then Jesus asked this question, do, what do you think? Who will love the, man, the, the creditor the most? And he says that it is very interesting how Simon answered the question. I suppose, you know, because he knows that what is coming towards him actually. Simon, this is what Estelle you're talking about, right? Because he was very eager. He was very eager to judge the other person. And she is a sinner. Remember that, right? Okay. She is a sinner. And this is an attitude that we see Luke again in chapter 18 also. Make sure that this self-righteous man looking at this woman and even at Jesus, they are saying about these things. Jesus answered him, who will love the, this creditor? The most. And he said, I suppose the, the who had bigger debt cancelled. Jesus stays there. And look at the Simon was so embarrassed by the action of this woman. And what is the problem with the Simon here? The problem with the Simon was his blindness. Blindness about what? Blindness about himself. He thinks that I am better than all these people. I am better than Jesus even. That was his problem. He couldn't see himself as a sinner at all. And he saw only this woman as a sinner and he is even questioning the authority, identity of Jesus and the ability of Jesus over here. Jesus saw her past. Sorry, Simon saw her past. But he couldn't see her future at all or what happened to her. So many a times the world identifies us with our failures. Many a times the devil calls us by name. And he labels us by our failures. That is become our name. But that's not the way that Jesus does. And he changed and changed forever. When God calls somebody, he is not called not based upon our past. Rather based upon what we are going to become. That is what God calls us. And that is what Jesus has done to this woman. 
Simon rejected. Simon could have the same, you know, offer also that could have received and he could have forgiven her sins also. But what he did, he didn't do. He rejected that offer. Rather, he is questioning and condemning either Jesus and his ability and the offer that he has given to him. Remember that the Bible says that he was freely given. Salvation is a free gift. It is an offer from God. You know, remember that it is a free gift of God. And that is what it is. You know, God so loved the world. And God loved everybody. But not everybody is not saved. Why? Because they didn't receive that offer. A company can give you an offer. Until you don't accept it, it's just a sheet of paper only, right? You don't appropriate it. God loves all of us and everyone in the world. But people don't respond to that love. They are not saved because of that. Simon was blind about his own sin. And he was prideful, arrogant. And he looked at this woman and says that, she is not worthy whatsoever. I can sure about that. That is the way she looked at that. She, he was not willing to receive the offer that Jesus has made to her. Then Jesus responds over there. Look at these three things that we see in that parable. Very quickly we can say, number one, you know, all are debtors before God. Romans chapter 3, 23, it says, all have sin and fall short of the glory of God. There is no Jew or Gentile. There is no Pharisee or there is no righteous. All of us. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The second thing, none of us are never able to pay back that debt whatsoever at all. You know, we will never able to satisfy God's demands whatsoever at all. The third thing, but the good news is that God freely forgiven our sins. We all are sinners. None of us are never able to pay it back, but God freely forgive our sins that is what the gospel that's what the salvation that's why we all are saved if you are not that is the way you can be saved receive the offer that jesus makes to us and accept him as the lord and savior so and then jesus talking back here we will finish here fast you look at that jesus is looking back jesus, there it says then he turned toward the woman and said to simon he's looking at this woman look at this woman here and he is explaining something over there. The beautiful picture that finished over there, it says that he who has been forgiven little, loves a little. And Jesus tells Simon, Simon, I came here. You know, culturally, at least you have to show some courtesy towards me. But you didn't do any of those things. You don't even do the mere duty even. But what this lady did, she went beyond the duty. This is what love does. Love go beyond the mere duty. That is what worship is then. That is what service unto the Lord means. You know, sometimes people ask this question, if you do this, you know, whether I will go to heaven, you know, can I do this? You know, can I drink this? Can I shoot that? We always wonder why that question comes actually. So the question is this, how many minimum things I can do still I can go to heaven? That is what it is. You know, remember that the smart Sunday school girl that who said, you know, the teacher was teaching about Lazarus and the rich man, finally asked who you want to be. The smart girl said, I want to be rich man here and Lazarus there. So many people are like that, right? They want to be rich man here, enjoy everything that I can enjoy in the world. And also I want to go there also. Many people think like that. So we love is not minimum service. That's not what it is. What Christ has loved for us in response, what God has done for us. That is a motivation of every service in the kingdom of God. Remember that Paul says, that the, 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 the love, Christ love that compels us is the, the motivation behind every action in the kingdom of God. The motivation behind every service we do to the kingdom of God. It is not for to show off. It is not to do any of those things. It is not for self-actualization. It is not for self-fulfillment. It is not what I get out of it. No, any of those things. Everything that you do, you teach us Sunday school, you know, you do small things maybe behind the scene. Why do we do what we do? The love of God that compels us. The love of God that compels us. That is the reason. That is what we see over here. This lady, she was willing to go beyond her ability. But Simon is only looking for minimum duty. The love go beyond the duty and the devotion that goes beyond the duty. And she loves because she cannot help loving because she must love. Why? Because she was loved first. And everybody put a label on her in the community. Everybody came for something else only for her. But when Jesus came to her heart and life, things was very different. 
and she was seen as a person she was valued as a person when he realized those things she says that i have much to risk and i want to give everything back to him when when the pharisee simon look there is nothing and i am okay and so i don't know anything more than that but what she did she go beyond the duty church that is what we want to do in service to the lord it is not because of anything else actually yes sometimes we take risk we sacrifice things we you know sacrifice many things why because of only thing in response to what he has done for us in response to what he has done for us so she saw that the gratitude within her is so great that is overwhelming she can limit it the moment she knew that jesus in the house she ran towards that and she don't care about this people look and what they are going to say their you know their reputation none of those things didn't matter to her she just want to go and meet jesus and she want to do what she can do it this is there is another incident that happened something like this that we read later that there jesus says that she did what she could you know about mary later in, in john chapter 12 that we read she did what she could here this lady she was loving expressing her love to jesus let's pray that this is our prayer you know when we come to worship and we sing the songs it is not some 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 you know, noises it is not some uh, lines over there it is we are expressing ourselves before god when he realized that what christ has done for us so how can we love the lord in such a way two things number one we should always have the deep sense of our sinfulness and there should be a perfect consciousness of god's forgiveness in our life not only that we say oh i am a sinner sinner no no we come the other side also yes none of us have no right to come before god you know the the the, the god that the bible teaches is god is sovereign god is almighty god is powerful the at the same way the other side it is god is loving god is just and god is merciful so that is a god that we our god is not just a monster our god is a loving god a father as you are singing you know he is loves us that is the good news of it so we always have to that understanding the conscious the, the, the deep sense of the sin in our hearts we are not worthy at the same time the conscious reminder of that christ has loved me and forgiven my sin you now when we talk about paul the apostle you know the theology of grace that enable him to serve god effectively and love him passionately you know he talk about himself in corinthians he writes that i am a i am the least among the uh, among the apostles then later that we read in in ephesians he says i least among the among the saints when we come to timothy he says that i am the chief of sinner you know the theology of grace that he realized that who i am and then he says in corinthians i am because of by the grace of god what i am you know that is what we understand that is why we come week after week here i am sure that you all have many things to do to why you are here this morning why we are here together we come again and again when we look back what god has done for us what else we can do you know you get discouraged you get disappointed as you serve god when you do things for the lord lord of things can come go, go wrong and we can get easily discouraged but what pushes move forward is this because christ has loved me first it is not because of anything to please you to show you to do any of those things to get the approval of the people rather because of a master who loved me that should be our attitude that should be our reaction the paul was a passionate person such a way where we get this passion each time look at this self righteous pharisee become a humble man and he says about himself i am the chief of sinish let that be our attitude this morning as we are in in god's presence so how do we do that one is that that realization you know that uh, we were sinners but christ has forgiven us the other thing that who christ himself is for us for this woman he is looking at the feet of jesus that feet was not pierced at that time but when you and i see that feet it was pierced for us you know when we understand that when we know that you know how can we refrain ourselves how can we become so reserved then and the only thing we can do is to to serve him you know as in the old testament example we can use or to remind the verses is that david is dancing before the ark remember that you know, that same thing because you know the god who made me the king of israel i will praise him more than this 
that should be our attitude as we come before him now the time is up actually let me read and finish over here how do we demonstrate our love for the lord look at this women again that can be a model you know one thing is that she desired to be with jesus she knew about jesus she wanted to be there and she was secondly she was bold enough to confess about her allegiance to christ she was not afraid to come and if you want to love jesus be bold to declare what god has done for you baptism is one of that thing you know that is what we are going to do in the coming months actually actually you know that is one of the things that we are bold enough to declare the world my allegiance to to christ and that is what god wants to do and also to do the some humble service service before the lord she didn't speak anything at all she came and she did what needs to be done that's all it sometimes you have to speak at all you can be there that it shall be a service and she was a had a repentant heart and a life of course when she was living a sinful life it was bad but when she start to turn around that is also good because she was bold enough to do that to demonstrate the other people how much he love her lord let me finish here by asking this question to our sisters now can we ask this to our sisters we can look into our heart now i think that there is a simon in each one of us there is a simon that we can see in each one of us at the same time there is this sinful woman also i don't know to whom you identify but let us pray that lord i know that you loved me that much i want to love you back all the service when for reading the scripture praying spending time with the lord sharing the gospel with other people serving him in order to become all these things were meaningful and become you know you become passionate about it this is the reason for that knowing that god has loved us so jesus says here those who who has been forgiven little loves little he tells us that you know our service our love towards god is in direct proportion to our understanding about the forgiveness of sin you know we are not saying that different sins are different degrees or anything but look at our own heart a person like me god loves me what else i can do other than giving myself to him would you please pray this morning as we can conclude you know i pray that this day is especially there are so many things that are coming up we encourage all of you to be part of the service and do this and that and other things but you know do is ask unto the lord as paul says to colossians do is do it unto the lord you know there will be difficulties you have to arrange your schedules you may have to take extra hours or time you know and do various things something maybe you may think that nobody sees what i do but why you do that i believe that we do all these things all of us we do because we love him why we love him because he has loved us first so let our worship become a little more passionate these days you know let just think about it as we enter you know the the 24 elders the four creatures you know the people those who lay their crowns before god and they praise him why you know they are not thinking about their achievements or their accomplishments they lay down all those things when they see when they stand before the king of kings before his throne so let that be our prayer this is one of our prayer earnest to prayers these days you know in a worship service we compassionate we have heard how god provided for our dear brother and family look at this what a wonderful god that we serve what a loving god that we serve what a faithful god that we serve so when we realize all these things what would be our response are you judgmental towards people you know this is what we encourage worship is an intimate time between you and god because of that we say do not disturb anyone else do not criticize anyone else and if you want to be quiet that is fine somebody want to express themselves that's fine you can you know according to your personality you express any way you want to but let that be a meaningful time between you and god i just want a few minutes before we finish now would you please pray children would you please pray why we sing why we do th- these things they may have a question you can answer them that question because jesus loved us jesus loves us and that is why this woman had no reputation in the city but she got a new identity now and jesus tells her go in peace the same pronounce the same blessing i want to pronounce upon you this morning those who come with the questions and you may have a difficulty you look back about many things maybe you know what went wrong and you are challenged by those things no that is over god loves you dearly that is what more important today and we experience that reality and pray that god help me to love you wherever you are i want to be there this lady came she didn't send 
the perfume of the summer. She came by herself. You know, worship is personal also. Remember that. So this morning, our service to the Lord is personal. You can send a check to the mission field. That is all right. But there are places you have to stand up for the gospel and share with other people. You are here because you want to show your love and appreciation to the Lord. Would you please pray? Let's pray together. Open your mouth and say one thing. What the Lord has done for you. you will you call into your attention? There are few, numerous things I would say you can call, right? But one thing you can say, what is the one thing that you, you cherish the most when you think about what the Lord has done for you? For this lady, it was a forgiveness of sin. That was the greatest miracle. That was the greatest uh, blessing. That is the greatest thing that any one of us can have. This morning, we are not saved or she was not saved, not because of the oil, not because of the tears, not because of, of, of she is there, not because of wiping Jesus' feet by her hair. She was not saved by any of those things. She was saved because of her faith in Jesus. So same thing you can do and I can do and we all can do. That's we have done in the past, I believe. So let's pray together, would you please? We can sing this last song, a chorus. And after that, we will pray together. And when we are singing, I just want you to think about this actually. Am I a, a Simon, like a Pharisee? And just be critical towards things. Or when I enter into God's presence, the only thing that comes into my mind is Him and Him alone and what He has done for me. Just shut down from all other things. Just concentrate on the cross. The deep sense of our sin and the great consciousness that Christ has forgiven. My sins was taken on the cross for me. Hallelujah. Before the throne God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hand, my name is Let's stand on our feet as we pray together. Father, we thank you for this morning.